In this question, we're looking at two elements, rubidium and oxygen, and we're trying to figure out the type of bond that they're going to form. So our first job is to look at our periodic table and figure out the metallic character of rubidium and oxygen. So let's head to our periodic table in the reference sheet tab. Rubidium is down here. Rubidium is a dark green color. That's an alkali metal according to our key at the bottom. Also everything on the left lower side of the periodic table, everything below this line here is a metal. So rubidium is a metal. Our other element was oxygen. Oxygen is up here. It's in that pale blue color, which according to our legend means it's a non-metal. We can also just think of it as anything above and to the right of this line here that I just drew is a non-metal. Those ones in the middle are our metalloids in that kind of bluey green color. So rubidium is a metal, oxygen is a non-metal. So we're trying to figure out what type of bond do we think will form. So there are two things to look at here. There's the type of element we have, the metallic character, and there's the electronegativity. So if we have two elements with opposite metallic character, one is a metal and one is a non-metal, that's typically going to result in an ionic bond being formed. So if we have a metal plus a non-metal, that's going to result in an ionic bond. In an ionic bond, because we have a metal and a non-metal, we'll notice the, the electronegativities are very different from each other. You can see rubidium has an electronegativity of 0 0.82, whereas oxygen's is 3.44. Oxygen's electronegativity is a lot higher than rubidium, which means it has a higher affinity for or attraction to uh, negatively charged things. As a result, when this bond forms, the oxygen is very attracted to rubidium's valence electron and pulls it towards itself and kind of takes it away from the rubidium. So the rubidium gives its spare electron to the oxygen because the oxygen has a much higher electronegativity. Now, if these were instead two metals, we had a metal plus a metal, this typically forms a metallic bond. And the way a metallic bond forms is that all of the uh, atoms, both the types of metal, they release their valence electron since they typically have low electronegativities. They're not super attracted to their outer electrons. They lose their outer electrons and the electrons form a kind of C around the metal uh, ions. The other type of bond we might have is between two non-metals. So a non-metal plus another non-metal. And that type of bond is called a covalent bond. So this typically happens between two non-metals which have, both have very high electronegativities. So they're both very attracted to electrons. And so instead of one giving their electrons away, both the non-metals share their electrons between them. So they both get to kind of keep their electrons and they get to kind of have the electron of the other atom too. They share them. However, there are two types of covalent bond. One type is where the electronegativities are very similar. So if the difference, I'm showing that with a triangle or delta symbol, the difference in electronegativity is less than 0.4, so they're very close, they're very similar electronegativities. This is called a non-polar covalent bond. And that means that the electrons are shared pretty equally between the two electrons. Neither is pulling the electrons towards it much stronger than the other. On the other hand, if the electronegativity difference between them is greater than 0 0.4, that's typically a polar covalent bond. And polar means that one of the atoms in the compound is more, 
it's pulling the electrons towards it more strongly than the other one. So they're still sharing the electrons, but one of them has pulled the electrons closer to it than the other one. And as a result, one end of the molecule is more negative and one end is more positive. And that's called polar or a polarized molecule. So in this case, we had the opposite metallic character, metal and non-metal, with a very large difference in electronegativity. So that causes an ionic bond to form. What happens in the formation of this bond? One atom donates electrons to the other atom. They don't get shared between them. They don't form a sea of electrons as they would with two metals.